So now that we've learned all about it, it's time to finally start running an hypothesis test. And this time we're going to do it for a single population proportion because that's the section we're in. And it has a whole bunch of steps. Now, I don't know what happened. Well, actually, I do know what happened. Um, it was apparently loading, as you can see all the words loading in here. And on my Google Doc, when I printed it into a PDF form and didn't finish. So I apologize for that. However, um, we can look at it correctly right there. And it's in our exam notes packet on page 267. And there it printed just fine. So I don't know exactly what happened, but I will fix that for future semesters. So you won't have to look at the word loading everywhere. But if you're in the fall of 2020, just grab exam notes packet page 267. Honestly, you're going to want to have that exam notes packet next to you at all times anyway, because well, um, it's full of references that we need. And so it's going to be very useful for us. So apologies for that misprint. All right, so you can see when you look at these hypothesis tests, or this hypothesis test, that it has a whole bunch of things that are familiar to you. So first of all, there's the requirements to conduct the test. And then that looks familiar, that's because it should. We learned about those in section 8.2. That was the central limit theorem for proportions. Remember the central limit theorem? So you need your um, sample to be random. You need your sample independent of the population, which means that the sample size is less than 5% of the population size. But then you need n times p times q to be greater than 10. In this section, we will use p0 and q0, which are the null values right here. So 0 goes with the 0 hypothesis, right? So p0 is the assumed parameter proportion or population proportion, which is a parameter from the null hypothesis. And Q0 is just as complement, right? Because P and Q are still the probability of success and probability of failure. All right, so then we have our hypotheses, which we learned how to construct in section 10.1. We have our level of significance, alpha, and that'll just be given, you just look for it somewhere in the problem. Then we're gonna find our test statistic, which is basically saying, hey, what's your Z-score, <laughs> right? Take your value minus the assumed value from the null hypothesis and divide it by the standard error, which we learned in section 8.2 is the square root of P times Q over N. Then step four will be to draw one of these pictures based on which type of hypothesis test we are running. So if it's a left tailed test, we will draw this picture. See the left tail is shaded. Two tailed shades both tails and then the right tailed. And then if the P value is low, reject H naught, H zero. And then we will write our conclusion as we learned how to in section 10.1. All right, so let's do this by hand. I've broken this one down a little bit into steps and pieces to help us kind of remind ourselves of some things that are affecting the re results and what's happening. So in a study from 2015, the Pew Research Center found that 24% of adult Americans paid for all their weekly purchases with cash, for almost all their weekly purchases with cash. A credit union researcher believes the percentage has decreased since then. They conduct a poll of 1,068 random adult Americans and find that 18% of them make almost all their weekly purchases with cash. And yes, this is a real um, survey in case you're interested. All right, so explain why the study must have been an observational study and not an experiment. Ooh, that's review. That's old school, right? So it would be unethical to randomly force people, right? Because that's what an experiment takes. An experiment takes random assignment. Um, particularly poor people have a hard time getting bank accounts um, and so it, it would be random it would be unethical to randomly start forcing people to not use cash like we take away all your cash but I don't have a bank account no I don't care you have to use a bank account right so it, it would be unfair and unethical to do that right so you must just observe what already happens We don't force people to use a bank account or to use cash. All right, now I'm breaking this down into little bits and pieces so we can use these. What are the researchers hypotheses? All right, well, there's the assumed value from the past. 
So back in the day, well, the hypotheses, of course, will be an H0 and an H1. We know that. We know the null hypothesis will have an equal sign. It's just the way null and alternative hypotheses are going to work. So we assume that what was true in the past is going to hold true now unless we can prove it otherwise. So this bit up here from the past, this is the part that's assumed. So right here, oh, and for the record, we're definitely talking about proportions, right? Surveys are always proportions. So um, we can tell it's a P here and a P here. For one thing, I see a percent in there. I see the word percentage here. I see a percent right there. And surveys and polls are always P. Well, not almost, almost always P, unless they're asking for a value from people. But if they're just saying, hey, do you use cash or not? Yes or no, that would be turned into a poll, right? Or excuse me, that would be turned into a percent. So that's a proportion. Right? I can make a little note. Right? P for parameter or P for population proportion, <laughs> same thing, right? So my parameter is a population proportion, it's P. Okay, so then I assume it's 24%, unless I can prove otherwise. So this number will also be 24%. It's going to be 24% for both of them. And then the researcher believes the percentage has, and then you have to look for the word. You're looking for words that'll give you a direction greater than, less than, and the word is right here, decreased. So that's less than. See, all those skills from 10.1, still useful. All right, so now they want us to verify the requirements. And if you're wondering, oh, what about the 18%? We'll get there. 18% is going to be used in part D, right? But part um, B, what was assumed to be true is from the past. The past is generally what is assumed, unless we can prove it otherwise. All right, now the requirements, random. Random should be given, and I think it was. It'll say somewhere that it was random. Yeah, no problem, random. We have a random poll, so this is yes, it was given, right there. Random adult Americans, no problem. Then we need the hardest one, the independent of the population. I think this is the most difficult one. We need little n to be less than 0.05 capital N. Now little n is our sample size, which is right here, right there. That's little n, right? So 1,068, is that less than or equal to 0.05? Now capital N, this was about adult Americans, and there are 210 million adult Americans. So I'm just going to put 210 million right here. And indeed, this is true. I mean, but I can prove it because I can find that number. I happen to know it's true. But 0 0.05 times 210 and then million is six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. And there it is. So indeed, 1,068 is less than or equal to one zero five zero 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 so that would be ten million five hundred thousand so that's a big fat yes right we definitely have that happening no problem at all last one last part would be the normal part we need n times p zero times q zero to be greater than or equal to ten now, N is 1,068. P0 is from the zero hypothesis. It's the thing that we assume to be true in the zero hypothesis, which is 24%. So I'm going to use 0.24. And then Q0 is the complement of that, so which would be 0 0.76, if you don't believe me. 1 minus... 0 0.24, look at that, 0 0.76, right? Because they've got to make one. So this one, I'm just going to write 0 0.76. That's Q0. 
All right, so then I'm going to multiply all of that with a calculator. And again, you could use a calculator or Desmos, either one. I'm going to use Desmos just for the heck of it, just to show you how easy it is. So 10, or 1,068 times 0.24 times 0.76, and we get 194.8. Wonderful. And you know what that is? That is bigger than 10, which is our goal. We want this number to be bigger than 10, and it is. Now, if you're thinking, that's all familiar. We've done all of that. Oh, yes, we have. <laughs> this is 8.2. Right? It's the central limit theorem. You have to have the central limit theorem, otherwise everything falls apart. Right? You can't do the rest of the problem unless it's random, independent, and normal. That said, you only do these steps, you only check these requirements if asked. Right? If you're not asked to do so, just assume that they're true and move on. So only do it if it asks you to verify requirements, or it might say the word conditions, either one. Right? Verify requirements or conditions, either way, right? Otherwise, don't bother, right? Only check the conditions if they're asked for, or only check the requirements if asked. Right, the problem asks you to do so.